Hello. Welcome. I wanna look in this video with you at the astrology of midsummer and I have here first like a chart for 1st of May. I'm recording 27th of April and we've had since spring equinox when the sun went over this line here with Pisces and and Aries uh, we had Aries season and we had the lunar eclipse in Libra and we had the solar eclipse in Aries so strong cardinal energy shifts and um, the same time like Ceres in Capricorn squaring the nodes now and there's this earth trine energy even if you count the black moon Lilith that is here in Virgo the series is here this and then uh, we got this conjunction of Uranus and Jupiter that just happened I think it was um, 20th of April the exact but they're still um, conjunct and that too did I think it didn't happen since the since 41 or something last time in Taurus so yeah here we are now then after these big shifts of stepping into our own initiative and uh, listening to our own will and aligning to that to the divine will and you know with Saturn in Pisces and and uh, now we've arrived in Taurus season we've got Venus stepping into Taurus soon to her home sign. She also rules Libra though, which is like the south node there. The turquoise sign in this chart where the south node is. So yeah, I feel like we, we want to really, really focus on the Taurus medicines. I mean, that, that always applies to Pluto Scorpio generation, but I feel like for every one man, <laughs> there's there's so much change and it can feel daunting and, and like unstable if we don't get like to calm our, ourselves down, like through the, the sensual experience. So it can be sounds that make you feel calm or like music or nature sounds or can be like warmth different um, warm baths or shower or even cold shower makes you feel nice then you can do that and um, yeah different things like this or like good nutritious food and being in an environment that's calm and diverse and nice yeah, Taurus, Taurus season. Right now when I'm recording this. So yeah, have have a great um, Beltane first of May. We call it Vappu here, but in Finland where I am. But yeah, then we um the moon. So this circle with the spot in the middle. It's gonna move here through Gemini still and then reach here the the white arrow that I have and that's when it's midsummer so 
gonna look at that for a bit longer. That's the idea. Okay. Here we go. The sun is in Cancer on Midsummer Day. The moon is opposite in Capricorn. These two signs are also cardinal signs and they form the grand cardinal cross together with Aries and Libra. Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn are the cardinal signs and they're forming this grand cross or you could say square but I like to think of it as a cross because when we have a cross there's like lines going through from the opposite sign to the opposite sign and like that instead of just a square where they're like a bit feels more chunky but if you think of it as a circle with the cross in it where they all connect in the middle and in the circumference and I think like with with astrology when you get a bit further into it when you start to know about all the different signs then you start to make the connections like how they work together and I think that's a good focus to have with the transits too and with like when working with your own charts like how can all these different energies through the aspects and everything like work together and form a functioning whole that can help you express your soul and uh, the more deeper meanings in life so yeah that's like the first thing that this makes me think of and because the moon is opposite the sun that means it's a full moon so we're gonna have a full moon on this midsummer day around that time so that's that's kind of cool <laughs> always like love the midsummer time um we gather at my dad's house and some friends come over and we uh, grill some food and uh, enjoy the summer and the, the light the long days yeah full moon so we've got Venus and Mercury right there in early cancer with this the sun and uh, uh, during this full moon and really I guess it's about really communicating about our relations kind of illuminating where where we need to find that Capricorn in ourself the mature Capricorn not the one that wants to control others but the one that knows that they have the right to choose for themselves and to build for themselves and then through that unique building uh, of our own potential then we will find ways to contribute to the world so that's really like the the true Capricorn there's a lot of shadow Capricorn in the world you know like when people take from others and destroy nature and like for profit we don't want that kind of Capricorn anymore <laughs> Pluto's gonna go and demolish the the rest of that stuff and so that we can start anew with that Pluto's gonna retrograde into the final degree of of Capricorn still end of the year for a few months and you can 
well ex i expect more things to come into light of like misuse of power and that doesn't mean that things are getting worse necessarily it just means we're becoming more aware of it and we're becoming aware of it so that we can change it okay yeah so yeah and like cancer the fourth house where where the sun is then with venus with mercury it's like the fourth house is our home it's it's like where we feel emotionally safe and yeah i don't know about you guys but usually for midsummer there's this tradition to spend it with family spend it like at a cottage in the woods or at the lake or something like that like low stress environment the people who are closest to you with you and enjoy the summer day a night that is not very long here but yeah short short nights long days yeah it's gonna be interesting like venus too is like still now at the final degree i think of aries when i'm recording this so she's gonna go through like the sun too is going through taurus and gemini still so we're gonna have the grounding in our relations going on and then like communications going on and bringing awareness to these things through taurus season gemini season and then in cancer season is going to be like really bringing it home to our yeah our family relations everything that we've learned about these cardinal directions bringing that all into the fold and our own will in aries our grounding in taurus and our communications in gemini and then bringing all that home on midsummer yeah also this full moon when it will move forward from from this midsummer day during and um guess the, the coming days after it's gonna conjunct pluto in aquarius so it's also bringing like that change of pluto very much like into into illumination and pluto in aquarius aquarius I like to think is it's more more than like the the bringer of change it's really like it's the kind of the divine mind or the the mind of the soul or how you could say that sees like the the natural flow of things that things need to change yes but also like is guided by something greater like a greater vision and that sees like how things all things are connected to each other in miraculous ways but also i mean sure science has got to do with it too but we can merge the science with with the spiritual perspectives and that's starting to happen so that's kind of cool i think that's part of it too we're gonna see the next 30 years with pluto in aquarius more hopefully and and also like this uranus in taurus has been like kind of 
I guess, bringing to awareness the the ways in which, which we are not <laughs> taking care of Taurus very well, our environment. Because our environment is part of our extended body, kind of. So, I hope that this new Uranus-Jupiter uh, cycle is going to be where we yeah learn to look at it more from 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 that kind of lens that we are only here thanks to the diverse natural environment that we have so we can't keep destroying it we need to keep protecting it more than we have I hope so. Let's do it together. Yeah. Yeah. You could still say about series and and uh, you know series is here in the purple circle the sickle kind of symbol at 17 of Capricorn and then we have here in Virgo we got Juno and Black Moon Lilith I have all the, the three um, points for her in the chart because I, uh, it reminds me of the triple goddess form of the dark goddess and you know like the dark goddess is linked to the subconscious mind and it's like in charts it, it can represent like where where you have some repression going on where something like in you was repressed and then that led to that you yourself your subconscious it was safer for you to suppress that in yourself as well so then that pattern stays with us sometimes for a longer time. But then uh, if we can become aware of it, then we can start to, yeah, to free ourselves from that pattern and create a better pattern for relating to that energy. So we've got it here in, in Lib, uh, no, not Libra, sorry. Um, Virgo collectively at the moment so with Virgo it could be as an example we could have that uh, your your unique gifts um, are not have not been appreciated and then uh, instead you had to like just provide the kind of service and help to others that they needed but it wasn't your calling and another uh, version might be that you're trying to do it so perfectly that you hold yourself back because it's not good enough because Virgo can be kind of like stuck in that perfectionism like it has to be perfect or I won't do it at all. But yeah. A healthy Virgo then uh, would be like you you recognize your own gifts and then you refine it with feedback from others. And uh, you find that where where does it meet with the needs of the community? What can you do? What is your uh, God-given gifts, innate gifts that you can bring of to others that they need and they appreciate and then they can help you by um, giving something in return to you again. So I feel like 
Juno, who is like the... Yeah, she's the original queen. She She's there wanting us to empower ourselves about what what uh, what is our true true gifts our true self to to bring that and refine that to be able to contribute that because that's what we're here for to be ourselves and express our own unique gifts so that's kind of part of like that black moon lily like can we become aware of and uh, identify when we have these self-defeating patterns and then uh, do the work of of being there for ourselves in a way that like compassionate and to kind of replace those beliefs with new ones like that it's okay if it's not perfect it's okay it's still a meaningful and can bring it forward and uh, I don't have to self-sacrifice to help others I can do it in a way that serves myself at the same time that serves the whole and I feel like that also has to do with kind of like the you know South Node Libra there it's like a lot of times there are these patterns we can see in the world in the social systems where we have been conditioned to do things a certain way but there is this you know Aquarius calling that is like we need to change we can't just stay the same all the time it's what our soul wants it can't keep everything the same it just doesn't work and we get probably pretty boring too and if it doesn't make us happy well it's not not just about being happy but if we keep getting hurt by the same pattern then it might be time to start working on shifting that pattern and, you know, skilled astrologers might be able to help you with that by looking at your chart and uh, collective transits together and uh, give you some advice because, you know, there's a lot of stuff coded in these, all these signs and there's only so much you can say in one sitting. But, yeah, even just little, like, highlighted important parts can help you forward so if you need some insights you can reach out you can send an email or a message and i'll get back to you about that we can uh, join the community all right Yeah. Pisces is opposite to to that black moon Lilith dark goddess energy. And there is Saturn there. Saturn is a uh, ruler of Capricorn. So, it's going to be there still for, I think, for a year or, or so. Yeah. Can we align like our uh, societal structures with with divine will, or like 
can they reflect the wholeness of who we are so that we're not like um so that it, yeah so that it's adjustable pisces is a mutable sign so it's it's like it can kind of bend with the currents and that's kind of what we need uh capricorn our structures to be like more it's like where we can adjust them and where we can take feedback and look at the big picture and make the adjustments we can't keep having this dysfunction all everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah series is the earth goddess mm, squaring the notes i think yeah we n we do need to take like action in in uh aligning with with the fact that we are here f by the grace of circumstance by the material and the spiritual coming together and here we are what what a miraculous thing to be sharing this experience with all of you and I think that if we can come to gratitude and and to into like honoring what we do have we have still diverse nature even if it's like not as widely dispersed as which would hope but we can we can change that we can start to add hedgerows to the fields and have those wildlife corridors and and change how we farm and we can have small farms that can grow local food and have uh, people owning small pieces of land i mean that would be so great again to to have that diversity and that would make you know the crops would be diverse and how we could find best practices with how to do it and the local uh, foods that the traditionally already we know of we can you know make that happen more <laughs> we don't have to import and export so much we can live on the land that we live on <laughs> we we are we are in relationship with our environment and when when we know that our food comes from nearby that helps us be aware b be aware of that more but yeah these are the kinds of things that i talk about um also in uh, other videos, not just astrology videos, and you can join the channel if you'd like. There's also some content in Finnish, so don't get weirded out <laughs> if you subscribe and there's like, what does this even mean? It's Finnish. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. I hope that you will have a great uh, grounding Taurus season. If things get overwhelming, find your favorite ways to relax and make yourself feel comfortable in your body. That's going to help you uh, anchor down uh, during these very like shifting times, big changes in the world. And uh, also... We are learning to heal our authentic communication and uh, returning back to ourselves, to our home, like back to I feel like our home is also our body and our emotions, like returning to how we are truly feeling. Yeah. 
So that's kind of what I'm seeing here. I hope to hear from you. Please like and share this if, if you find it interesting. And uh, yeah, we'll see what, what I think of next time to make. I have some tarot videos too and about the garden and yeah, forest garden stuff. Yeah. Okay, see you.